What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. Very, very interesting story. So many people uh, have kind of, how do I say, fallen out of the news circle around, um, you know, Miss Amber, mostly because, well, everyone got, you know, inundated with it during the trial and everyone was just sick of it. But a little known fact is, she actually just had a movie release, a movie that highly anticipated a mystery thriller with uh, featuring the strong acting of Amber Heard. We've seen that she can act. We saw it on the stand. We've seen it uh, in real life. But now she's out on her own with her own feature film. And as of right now, as the time of this recording, it earned worldwide. $21,000 and the reviews are even better. And we're gonna get into that after a super quick word from this video sponsor. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Policy Genius. If you have anyone relying on your income, you need life insurance, it's that simple. Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need at the right price. I literally just went through this process. I would started to think about it and well, I wish I had a little bit more direction coming out the other end, knowing a lot more now than I did then. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million in coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. And with the cost of living increasing and things like interest rates going up, it's important to think about making sure you leave enough behind for those you love. Your loved ones deserve a safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find it and buy it. Head to policygenius.com slash the quartering or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. In the fire. Premiering now has received a 10% critic review score with a 30% audience score. 10! 10%! 90% of people that watch this film said it sucked. Nobody. Now, this is in theaters. You can rent it on Amazon Prime or Apple TV, and it has earned $21,000. Now, I want to go to just the critic reviews. These are people that you know really want to give her the benefit of the doubt, right? Imagine being her and having the entirety of the media behind you, even in the face of irrefutable evidence. And this is how they review your movies. Brian Favour, Favour, for a movie about a sinister child unintentionally terrorizing a small town, it lacks any real suspense. Rotten. Todd Jorgensen. Despite the title, there's not much heat in this slow-burning horror saga that is more tedious than suspenseful. Rotten. Brian Lowry, CNN, top critic. A pretty awful starring vehicle for the actor that she also produced, a film unlikely to produce many sparks beyond those offset by the morbidly curious. Review, Rotten. Travis Hobson. Its problems are many, such as still style, st stilted dialogue, predictable genre tropes, and there's a general sense that this movie wouldn't even exist if Amber had passed on it. Rotten. There's considerable flaw in the calculation of this tale, and it leads to a sour, hypocritical conclusion. Rotten. Mike McGra McGranahan. This isn't entertainment, it's an endurance test. Rotten. Avi Offer. A shallow, tedious, and forgettable horror thriller that suffers from clunkiness, stilted dialogue, lazy exposition, a lackluster plot that's dark, but very low on suspense and intrigue. Amber Heard is miscast here and gives a hammy performance. Also, she produced it. Just saying. Now, the lone non-rotten review. Aaron Peterson of The Hollywood Outsider writes, in the fire, bandies back and forth between science and religious doctrine and ultimately delivers an engrossing thriller which contains some of Amber Heard's best work. 6.5 out of 10. 
It's some of her best work and you gave it a 65%. Also, it seems that your review is flying directly in the face of what literally everyone else said. Some passion does emerge in this performance, but wilder swings of condemnation along with romantic entanglements take material that initially feels invested in reality and turns out to be a soap opera, rotten. The last one fails as a crisis of faith slash science drama and supernatural thriller in the fire is where it actually belongs. That, I mean, that's, this is, and then you look at this, the numbers, okay? International box office. Now, I don't know how long it's been out and, you know, whatever, but I'm sure In the Fire 2023 has earned $21,000 internationally. So it hasn't been relief, released in the States yet, but $21,000. Even though the director says, her director says she's just like her fearless truth teller character whose convictions get her uh, handled in the public square. In the Fire, Amber Heard's first film since losing her legal war against Johnny Depp, she plays a fearless truth teller whose convictions get her dragged through the public square. And that's what I see in Amber, director Colin Allen told Rolling Stone last Friday. I wonder if they're sleeping together. Um, I see a fearless truth teller whose convictions have gotten her the 2022-2023 version of that, which is getting Drake through social media on a global and epic scale. Well, it'd be really easy to not have that happen. You know, don't collaborate with, was it the ACLU? I forget, it was like, it was one of those things, ACLU or something. Um, to try and ruin a man's life. Look, I've never been, you know, I guess much to my detriment to the the Johnny Depp stands. I've never been one of those people that well, Johnny Depp was an angel and never did anything wrong. And she's just an evil woman who is 100% at fault. I think that their relationship was toxic and that they both did bad things, but only one of them tried to ruin the other's life. In one key scene, Grace is asked what her lie is while hypnotized. And she replies, that I'm a fraud, that I repeat teachings of great men, that I'm not one of them, and then I'll travel to the edge of the world to prove myself only to fail. <laughs> oh yeah, they're definitely, these two definitely hooked up. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. Like, there, there's, again, this is in the same week where, or just days after, you know, Amber continues to walk with a crutch as she stepped out in Madrid recently amid her bombshell claims Aquaman 2 co-star Jason Momoa pushed to have her fired from the film. The actress who injured her hip while training for the New York City Marathon looks in good spirits. Hey, I don't want like, I don't get like the weirdo like going on to her, oh, it looks cold in there, going on their, uh, you know, their Instagram or whatever and like following them on Twitter and screaming at them. I mean, she basically was publicly humiliated uh, and when Aquaman 2 comes out, it's going to resurface all of this again. Like every, I've said this since Jump Street, that every single social media post about this movie, unless they completely cut Mara as a character, is going to be full of people saying, nope, not seeing it. Or they're going to say, oh, is Amber still in it? Not going to see it. Not seeing it. And that's, that's what every single Facebook post, Twitter post, their only hope will be to turn off all comments. Like legitimately, that's their only, their only chance is uh, if they completely censor fan feedback because th that's, that's what's going to happen. People are going to crush them. You see, Heard will return as Mira and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom set for release on December 20th. Thank God, because we need something to talk about. Okay, after previously claiming uh, her, her during her highly publicized court case, that uh, that he fought, she fought really hard to stay in the movie, but that they didn't want to include her in the film and that her scenes were cut. Well, I think that we saw, we now know the truth that she definitely was, um, that people definitely tried to get rid of her in that movie. I, I don't know if it was Jason Momoa or the director or anybody, but I'm sure everybody on that set knew that this, she was an albatross, that she was going to, because of the drama, because whether or not she won or lost that lawsuit, it was going to be a disaster for the movie. It's going to cost them $100 million in box office minimum because all of the conversation around this movie has been absolutely negative. 
Now, did Jason Momoa really try to get her fired? I don't know. I don't care. But I suspect probably. You know, and I think you look at even CNN, okay, one of the most sympathetic sources to Amber writes, in the fire, Amber Heard's first movie after the death trial goes up in flames. Filmed as an Italian-American co-production on what looks like a minimal budget, the movie makes its debut simultaneously in theaters and digital on demand. A logical strategy since theatrical toehold quickly goes up in flames. Set in the 1890s, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, talk about the film. Unfortunately, there's no time to find out. Generating publicity for a little movie that otherwise might have come and gone with scant notice represents a classic double-edged sword. In the Fire didn't have to be great to stoke those embers, but in terms of capitalizing on the attention, the film needed to be a whole lot better than this. Yeah, I mean, people know her name, and even CNN says your movie sucked. I, I, I guess I don't really know how else to, to encapsulate it, because that's as bad as it gets. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it. You subscribe down below, and we'll talk to you again real soon.